Welcome to Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast, brought to you in proud partnership with JNS Accessories and Bimoto Motorcycle Insurance. Hello and welcome back to Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast. I'm your host, Dave Neal. I'm delighted to entertain the whole of the FHO Racing female division. This is fantastic. The first for the podcast, and that in, it's a first for me as well because I've never had so many people on a podcast at the same time. <laughs> Timona Fejo, Fay, welcome. Thank you. Lovely to have you on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Maria Costello, MBE, around the corner. Hello. I can see you in there. Pull that microphone a bit closer for you, Maria. That's it. And then let's go this way round. What's your name and where uh, you're from? I'm Kate. I'm from <laughs> Preston in Lancashire. Um, and I'm racing in the BMW F900 class. Wonderful. I'm Denise Dalzotto and I'm Italian. I'm from uh, Veneto and uh, I'm racing in the Junior Supersport. Uh, hi, I'm Holly. I'm from Wiltshire and I'm racing in Junior Supersport. Um, I'm Scarlett. I'm from Manchester and I'm racing in Junior Supersport on a Ninja 400 as well. Uh, I'm Jamie, I'm racing in June Chief Sport as well, and I'm from Birmingham. If you They're all tell. really self-aware as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is put you all on the spot beautifully. Um, Faye, if we can bring you in first, please. Maria, yeah. if you pass the microphone along. Yeah, no problem. Faye, welcome back to the show. Thank you for inviting us in. This is fantastic. I know. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. Um, yeah. What a wonderful uh, selection we've got across two different classes now. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's um, growing. Yeah, it is growing. <laughs> and I'm really happy to have Maria back this year to actually uh, mentor the girls for me and help them through the season. Um, and um, having Kate here. This year, this season in the 900 Cup, which is good. And Denise, really happy to have her. You know, she's like a little firecracker. Like <laughs> <to> say. <laughs> I say she's like a little Valentino Rossi. So yeah, a female version. So it's good. Um, and obviously lovely to see, you know, Holly and uh, Scarlett and Jamie back too. So, you know, the team is growing and, you know, that is one kind of um, vision that I have when I kind of started to um, supporting the girls in racing in 2021. Um, it's always been something that I kind of want to grow on, but I don't want to do it too quickly because I want to focus on the girls now and kind of bring them to the point where I feel like they have actually improved or succeed to where they want to be. So I don't want to kind of like have too big of a, a, um, a group just yet. I want to really put my effort into these girls first and then slowly from there uh, move on to maybe have, you know, more riders coming, more female riders coming on board. Yeah, but I'm just really glad that, you know, I have my old team here and obviously, you know, two new uh, um, um girls on board and obviously Maria is doing a great job with helping them out so it's good how do you choose your riders in what is there a criteria or is it something is it a feeling that you have or how do you decide who rides for FHO racing I think you know it's more about the um, determination they have um, and because riding for FHO um, you're basically riding under my um, uh Banner, um, it's a brand. So um, it comes with um, some benefits, but then also I need to see um, effort being put into it. And with Maria's experience, I'm hoping that you, she can pass on the um, experience to the girls and kind of give them a bit of a platform so then they can actually push themselves a bit more through the season and actually, you know, beat their timing each time to actually so that they can feel like they're actually moving forward and that's my goal in a way to kind of bring them to a, a level where they want to be um they you know everyone's kind of have goals in life and i think these girls know exactly where their goals are what positive aspects has maria brought in already and it's only been a fairly short space of time at the back end of last season then coming in with at round one yeah. already the winter's disappeared already but what positive effects has maria, oh, had maria already? you know with she's been fantastic with all her experience she's a fantastic rider um so you know um she's been in this kind of 
business for so long so she knows you know different aspects of it and it's good that because she can actually give the girls um like uh tips and you know her kind of experience and how to do it you know and the girls can always go to her if they have any problems so it's a it's a good combination where do you see the team in five years time Oh my God. You know, I was asked that question just now in the other podcast. <laughs> um, oh, um, it wasn't Don that asked that question, surely. <laughs> no, it was not common. But anyway, um, for me, um, I feel like I've had this is my third year in BSB, and I feel like I'm still kind of learning in a way. So. But in the future, I mean, I do want to go into other championships, but I want to kind of have my foundation here first before I start stepping into something I don't know. So um, being a, a kind of a very relatively new team, um, I'm still kind of learning different things, you know. So I want to make sure that I get the experience. And, and obviously, I want to get some, you know, uh, wins too and, you know... <laughs> Uh, looking on my lineup this year, um, fingers crossed, you know, hope, hoping we get fingers a few I like it. podiums. It, it's, it's nice to have that vision that you're not trying to push it too far too soon. But the, 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 the best question that I have to ask, and sorry if they asked it on the previous podcast. All right, it's fine. Who's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> They're all sat here going, <laughs> <laughs> No, they did ask me what was the best decision I made this year. And I think it's having Josh on board. That's the best decision. I mean, I, w I wanted him last year. And I understand that, you know, a lot of riders are a bit more skeptical because the team is very new. They're not quite sure where what direction I'm going. Um, I mean, when I first kind of set up the team in 2021, people might think that, oh, she's only going to do it for one year and then she's going to disappear. But no, I really enjoy it. And I want to push on um, and I want to kind of, you know, get results. And I think this year, Finger, I'm, I'm hoping. Well, we, we had Josh and, and Pete on the show earlier on, and I yeah. think they're a great dynamic to bring to the superbike side, yeah. both on the roads and on the BSB yep. circuit. And Josh proved that today, fourth fastest on his first weekend out on the exactly, bike. Exactly, yeah. And both riders into Q2. Yes. Which yeah. is fantastic. So exactly. it, it's all going the right way. And yeah. Mark Woodage as well, who was on the show just after Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Another big addition to the team yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm really happy to have Mark. Um, so obviously this year, um, I'm not participating in the super stock side because I want to focus on Superbike. So we added addition uh, staff to the team. Um, having Josh on board, I want to make sure that I provide the best uh, support that he can get. So obviously Mark came on board to be his crew chief. And then we have Andrea to be on the electronics for Josh's side. So we have two electronics guy and two crew chiefs, one for each rider. So I want to make sure that I give them as much as I can give them so then they can give me the result that I want. They're already considering being one and two at the Northwest. Oh, really? We were discussing that earlier. <laughs> Which is, well, it's possible. Yeah, you never it's know. It's possible. Yeah. And I think yeah. there'll be a raft of podiums. And it, I think it's the most open British Superbike Championship we've had in, in a few years. Yes. Whereas if you're on a Yamaha, the last couple of seasons, if you're top Yamaha, you've won the title. Mm. This year, I genuinely don't think that's going to be the way. Yeah, I think the BMWs think be, are going to be strong. I think the Hondas mm. are going to be strong. I think it's it's going to be an exciting season. Yeah, I think so too. Very yeah. much looking forward yeah. to it. Thank you, Faye. Oh, you're welcome. Maria? So we'll get to you Hello, in a bit. You, you you just you listen to the grown-ups. You <laughs> yeah. sit there and just listen to the grown-ups. It's important. <laughs> Maria, welcome to the team. Thank you for having. Oh so well, I'm just, yeah. just going to move that that way a little bit. Not thank you for having it's us on the podcast. You're welcome. You can let that go. There, that won't move. <laughs> you don't move. No, sorry, right, I'll put that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's easier. Um, hey, Maria, tell you, is it, yeah, you see, tell us about your role in the team, Maria. Tell us how you've adapted into it and the girls yeah. that you're working with, it's ladies a, that you work with. It's actually a huge girls. undertaking, and it's a role that's evolving with almost every race meeting round that we do. And because I don't think there's ever been a woman that's looked after five female racers before, you know. So um, 
obviously motorbike racing to me means the world and I've loved and I still love my sport and I want to pass on whatever I can to the girls and support the girls obviously this is a massive learning curve because they're only going to get out of it what they put into it and we're kind of all learning this and building up this relationship and even though we had a good chunk of time with the three girls that are remaining in the team we're still building up this relationship and uh, I, th I think we can still improve things and just because I want them all to do well. Ultimately, I want them all to do well. I want them to enjoy this sport. I think that's so important. And I think they all think like, yeah, Marie, you keep going on about that. But it goes like this, right? Blink of an eye. I've been doing it longer than they've all been alive. That's quite and a scary thought, isn't it? <laughs> Well, not scary. I mean, I'm quite proud of the fact that I'm still competing and uh, even at my age and uh, I don't have all the answers for them, but I'll definitely go and find the answers for them um, so that they can excel and enjoy what they're doing. I had a thought of a question as I was thinking about this last night. If you were in the girl's position at the, that time, listening to you and having you as a mentor, what's the best bit of advice you'd give yourself? That is a massive question, Dave, because there's... Do you I know was what? three Moretti's in at this point. <laughs> <laughs> because if I'd been... There wasn't opportunities no. like this back then. What Faye's doing by giving them this platform is huge. This, this wasn't that. And I didn't have anyone as... Just anyone stood by my side helping me. I was working it all out on my own. And I, di I didn't have family there supporting me because they went into the race and they didn't understand it. They didn't have a clue what I was doing. And I had to work it out often the wrong way. Um, so let's... So that's where I think where I want to come in and go, okay, let, we don't need to go down that route. That's not going to get you anywhere. So... And almost just to be there as an emotional support as well. Racing's tough, male or female, whatever, you know. And um, that, that is something I do want to try and get across to them all and go like, I'm here for you because Faye's put me here for you. And um, what's going to help you get to where you want to be? So I don't know whether I answered your question you there, did you, I? You, I kind of went off on one You dropped your shoulder there. on it beautifully, to be fair. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just avoid that question completely, but it, it's fine. I'm not going to ask it again. That's fine. Although it was eloquently answered anyway. <laughs> I think the girls are sat there going like, oh, okay. That's cool. <laughs> it's good. That, that's the way it works. That's okay. Um, what are the strengths that you've seen in the girls so far? Wow, we've got such a mixture here. I think we've... We've got a lot of resilience, determination, um, perseverance, and what uh, and what I want to see is that they want it. They want it, and it's this is the bottom of the mountain. You know, we 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 we're, we're starting out here. Okay, we're at BSB, but this is we've got a long climb. There's a lot of work to do. All the effort's got to be put in in every aspect of this. And, um, you know, because they are riding under the FHO banner. So they've all got to perform in certain ways. And, you know, that that's not just on the track. That's social media and, and PR and podcasts. And, you know, they're all representing Bay and the team. So that's another huge element, really. Yeah. One thing I've seen this year and certainly in the new year, um, our great friend Brad Howell with his Mad Academy. I can see him just over there. <laughs> um, Brad's done a fantastic job with all his riders, but bringing in your riders into that for the fitness, the nutrition, the diet side of things yeah. is an integral part of being a motorcycle racer. Isn't it just? And I was so pleased that Faye was all in on that and wanted to provide them with that part of it because it is it's part of your job it's part of your job to be fit for your sport to fuel yourself well look after yourself um because all those top class racers 
are having to put the effort in and do all of that to get to where they want to be. And um, yeah, so it's massive. I love what Brad's done. And I even did the fitness test as well. And uh, yeah, because it wasn't about finding out your weaknesses to go, oh, you know, to find the negatives because you find your weaknesses to improve on your weaknesses. And that's, that's hopefully we're going to see improvements because it will transfer to the track. So, yeah, no, this is great. This is great. He does a good job. And he, I, think I, so. I think he's, he's good. Yeah, I'll try. But just bring Faye back in. Just going to bring yeah. Faye back in a second on this one. I'll come back. I'll come and try it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Faye, that must give you a lot of pride to listen to Maria and and to know that that your riders are in safe hands, and especially going through the fitness test and nutrition. Yeah. It, it's encompassing the whole ethos of being a motorcycle racer. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, I think. Um, Having the training and all the uh, nutrition facts and everything, I think you you have to be fit and then your top shape or your mentality that you know you're going into this, that you give it 150% what you can give because, you know, doing this sport, it's all about um, your mindset of how far you can push yourself. And I think these girls actually, you know, in have actually been training themselves to actually get their mind in that mindset so that they can go out there and fight and show the others that they can do it too. And, you know, and I always said that before I kind of came into BSP, um, I mean, I was in the paddock in 2018 and 19. I didn't really notice the girls that much because they were kind of hidden under the radar. And and when I actually had my own team, um, I started to kind of notice and go, well, you know, why don't I just kind of pull them in and give them a bit of support? And I'm really happy to see, you know, all these girls, they're really, you know, they've got the determination and they're like ready for the season and they want to go out there and do their best, give it 150 percent and show everyone that, you know, we can do it, too. And that's how I see it, too, because... When I set up the team, uh, I knew if I didn't come into the championship with a bit of a present, people would just look at me and go, oh, you know what? She's only doing it for fun. Oh, she'll probably do it for a year and that's it. She'll go. But no, I'm here and I'm doing it right. So and I'm hoping that, you know, the girls can see that and kind of, you know, use that bit of determination to say I can do it this year and I'm going to do it better than last year and I can do it right that's the yeah. ethos isn't it <laughs> can you do it yes you well don't sound too sure <laughs> come on girls you can do it that's it, it. It's exactly yeah. it. that's exactly what we got here right bring this across Dave before you go on from that like before I just go on that's generally <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's what I found, obviously, I've been doing this a long time. It's hard to be taken seriously as a female. So you're kind of coming in at that point, and they've all got to work that bit harder. But Faye's helped them. She's given them this platform. They're visible. And uh, hopefully that does help get them seen and show that they're all very capable and can compete against the guys, definitely on their terms. You know as well as anybody, it's a tough macho sport. Yeah. Well. And it takes probably more um, in this sport than any other to prove yourself against the mo because you end up with a target on your back. It doesn't matter because it's a macho thing. The lads are out there. So, I'm not being beaten by a girl. Yeah. Tough luck, you're about to be. Yeah. It has Deal improved. It. it has improved. Honest, honest. It has from when I started, but it is still there. Yeah. And um, so they've still got to work against that. Excuse me. Push against that. But um, they're all doing that. What was the biggest hurdle you came across in your time? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> it's a podcast. It's my podcast. I'll ask the questions. Biggest hurdle. <laughs> Being taken seriously. Yeah. 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 You know, no, you're just the girl. We don't give bikes out to girls. You can't race at the TT. Um... When did you finally feel accepted? I think you're always still working to be accepted in the sport, you know? 
no, hey, look, I have found my place in it. I'm very fortunate. And, um, but yeah, even, you know, sidecar racing, adding that in. Can't do both at the TT, Maria. Can't do both at the TT. Well, of course you can. Of course you can. <laughs> Why That's, can't you? I'm still finding those hurdles now at that point in my career. It's crazy, isn't it? She's ridiculous. In this day and age where it, if, if you're faster than me, you're faster wrong, than me. I don't care. It? <laughs> He's one of those. I don't care whether you're male or female or whatever. It's good there to are prove... only two genders, though. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being drawn into that. It's good to prove people wrong. You just don't want that to be your aim. Well recovered. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I was, I'll be really honest. Having you guys all here, I was dreading this because I know what you two are like. And all you do is sit there and do that. This is what happens. But thank you for your honesty, oh, ladies. No, no, I really no. appreciate that. Thank you. Let's come this way now. I can give you two a rest now from your interrogations. <laughs> On to me. It's been a while. Introduce yourself again. <laughs> because the more we do I'm, it, the more people understand who I'm you are. I'm Kate Walker, and I'm racing in the F900 Cup. Excellent. What's your background, Kate? Um, I've been mini motor racing since I was six. I then went pit bike racing, and then just basically I got a 125, 300, and last year I raced a... Steel Frame 600 at Thundersport. Um, I was I was second in the championship in the end. It came down to the last race. It was next to no points in it at the end of the year, but I'd been leading all year. Um, 30 races, 30 podiums. Um, but there, there isn't much else to me other than motorbike racing. I don't do anything else. This is, it's my life. This is an, that's an incredible record. 30 races, 30 podiums. That's fantastic. Yeah, if I'd have if I'd have managed to win, I'd have been the first woman to win a national championship, a national 600 championship in the history of the ACU. That's... Just, but to I, be was, fair, you didn't do jobs. bad overall. No, it was, it's another it was the one. last race. I got, just got pipped in the last race. <laughs> but, what would you have done differently in that last race? Do you know what? It's not the last race I'd have done differently. I made a tyre call at the beginning of the season. We cannot, we can all say these things though, can't we? But at the beginning of the season, I made a tyre call and I ran a wet front on a drying track at Brands Arch. And by the end of the race, trying to turn into Paddock Hill, it was just, it was so bad. It wouldn't go where I wanted it to. The tyre had just overheated. And that's the one point in the season where I think that was a silly, silly call. And everyone was saying to me, I don't think you need a wet front. And I was like, I was adamant that I did. And I, yeah. That's the, that's the one thing I would do differently. Is that your biggest learning curve so far as well? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because yeah, yes, I am right, but I'm not always right. I know I've got to ride it. I've got to feel like I'm confident. The reason I did it was I wasn't confident that that front was going to grip. But obviously, it was a mistake in the end, and maybe I should listen to the people around me who, are, who know what they're talking about, who've been racing a long time, when they said, you can have the confidence in that, instead of going, yeah, but I know I don't, I should have gone, they would, I should. I like that. It's nice that you can look back and go, actually, but you can justify why you made that decision mm. because you had the presence of mind and the confidence in yourself to go, that's what I'm going to do. But if it's wrong, then I know why. Yeah. But you can deal with the consequences that way. Well, I find as well that... Often when you're making tyre choices, if you let other people decide for you, you sit on the grid and you go, I'm, I don't I don't feel like this was me. I don't feel like this was a good idea. So that's why I was like, nope, sticking to my guns, I'm I'm right. But yeah, that's, that's the one mistake I made last year that kind of bugs me still a little bit. How do you approach this season doing it that way then? Um, well, I have quite a privilege this year because I've got coops with me in my tent um now he has told me that he won't ride in the rain so if he won't ride has he yeah that's what he said he said he didn't <laughs> want to ride in the rain but what a wuss. he's gonna <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna uh, <coughs> I, I feel like he's probably gonna be a good no get your head in the game we can run slicks in this it's fine there's nothing wrong if i can you can 
which is helpful because you're about the same height and stature. Yeah. <laughs> so you can actually use the settings as well if you want. <laughs> you can share data. It's fine. It's the way to do it. We've been going on about this in the tent all day yesterday. I wasn't listening in. It was just what, I, what just how I see it. <laughs> how much are you looking forward to racing the bike? Uh, I am really looking forward to it. Um, I am nervous for the first start because I don't know how it's going to go. Yesterday's um, practice start was quite hectic, shall we say. Um, people were staying on the grid too long, which was a bit weird. Um, so I was too busy concentrating on that and not the track, which I think is what did that, like what made me feel a bit like that. But once the first starts out of the way, I think we'll be fine. It, is it not just wind a throttle back, dump the clutch and away you go? Is that not how you do it? Yeah, as long as everybody else does the same. <laughs> There's a lot of bikes out there. Yeah, there is. They're, they're big, heavy things as well. Yeah. They're great to race. They look great out there, especially now they're all out together. And there's some big names in there as well. So you'd be picking scalps off yeah. left, right and centre. They're awesome to ride, to be fair. Because when, when we went out to Spain, me and Maria, I didn't... I wasn't expecting them to be as nice to ride as they were because I had not, not sat on mine up till that point. Um, and they don't look like a race bike. But when you get them out on the track, they are mega fun to ride. They're like a big comfy armchair, according to Tom Herbertson. <laughs> a big comfy armchair. <laughs> she rides comfy armchairs, though. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Tom, Tom's a good friend and I, I don't want to upset him. <laughs> no, I'm only, I'm only kidding. Um, yeah, that was his idea. Just how he feels on it from a, a race bike perspective. That's fine. Thank you. I really enjoyed that. Next. Oh, I'm stood on the wire. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Ciao, how are you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Shall we do a reminder to everybody of your name and what you're racing in? Yeah, I'm uh, Denise Dalzotto and uh, I'm an Italian rider and I'm uh, racing in the Junior Super Sport. And what's your background? What? Your history, <laughs> your history in the sport. Oh, how okay. did you get? How did you get here? Don't say you yeah. flew. Okay. I'm not having that. <laughs> okay. Um... I started to riding a mini moto at two years old in my garden and I started going in the track at uh, nine years old because I have seen um, Valentino Rossi on the TV. I look at my mom and my dad and they say, I want to do this in my life. <laughs> and uh, my mom have looked like, I've looked me like, whoa, what do you want to do? <laughs> and um, I'm, yes, I want to do this. So they bring me to the track. I have started racing, I have the Italian Championship with the Mini Moto, with the Mini GP, European Championship in the Mini GP, and now I'm here, so I'm glad for this. <laughs> this is season number two, two here, two. isn't it? Yeah, two with the 400, two in England, because uh, three years ago I have uh, the Italian and the European Championship in the Mini GP, and uh, last year I was with Affinity Sports Academy. First year in England and first year with a uh, super sport. Massive change, but it's all right. What's been the biggest thing you've enjoyed so far about being in, racing in the UK? Uh, not the rain, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's an amazing class. Everybody is really fast. Um, I'm happy. The track is amazing. I think the, the thing I have liked more is the track because it's totally different compared in Italy. Is up and down a lot, and um, I really like that. So I think this because it's a big learning, is different stuff. <laughs> What's been your favorite circuit? Mm, I like lots of Donington, but also Brown Such is amazing because it's lots of up and down, and you don't see the corner. So it's I like it's fun. <laughs> working with Maria this year, how has she helped you so far in the time that you've been working together? Helping me a lot to understand the people, <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, no, helping me a lot. Have a lot of experience and uh, make me a lot of calm. So it's good because um, I have working with she just this weekend, and uh, I have seen the main thing she do is look at uh, every single girl see how character they are so bring uh, every single girl and change it herself for everybody so that's i think is uh, really important uh, and uh, is really good about she yeah and um, moving from the, the team last year into phase team yeah how much of a, a positive role has, has Faye played in that i think is really positive also because i compare myself with other girls last year i was just the one girl. So um, I think that is really good. And um, they helped me a lot of more, listen to me 
a lot. So also the other team have a lot of rider because this year have 12 rider. So, you know, it's difficult to uh, uh, follow single rider and uh, 100%. And uh, in this team, uh, I feel like in a family and uh, I feel like uh, follow myself. Some people is following me, is helping me and uh, at 100%, so it's good. And the final question, what's your target for this year? Oh, I want to win. <laughs> for sure, I think everybody want to win. Um, I think I can do really good because last year was first year. Uh, I see the track only in the race. So this year I have a little bit more experience and um, yeah, I think I can do some podium and I want to win for sure. <laughs> I look forward to see how the season progresses. What I'd like to do, especially while we have Maria and Faye here sometime mid-season, if we get to do this again and yeah. see where the girls are and tell the story across the season. Would yeah. that be all right? Yeah. Fabulous. Ha, ha, you all get to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Denise. No Thank problem. You. Ciao, ciao. I give that to you. <laughs> So you can have, I'll tell you what, you can have one each. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but <laughs> is that a bit high for you, Scarlett? <laughs> no. So just do that. And just do that. And one on the end, that's fine. Well, you've done this before, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. What's changed since the last time we spoke back at the end of the 2021 season? I've changed classes this year which has been a very positive experience. It's been good. It's probably my, my second time probably riding the bike and my first time properly being able to push. I did a track day, but there was no, we couldn't overtake. We weren't allowed to overtake. So that made it very difficult when you're riding with like track day riders that, mm. and the, there was a few stock thousands trying to wave me by and I was like, I don't think I'm going to come past you. But um, Hang on, say that again. Yeah. So we weren't allowed to overtake. There were a few stock thousands waving you back. Yeah. I was <laughs> You've been bullying people. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, we're not allowed to overtake up the inside and they can see me in the corners and my corner speed was faster. So I think I kind of scared them a bit, but it got to the straights and then they tell, tell me to go by, but my bike's not fast enough to go past them in a straight line. So it was made it very difficult to get a good lap time in. Um but now this is my first time I've been able to push and I'm very happy with basically my first proper time pushing on the bike. I've done all right. And I think that throughout the season, I'll be further up there after. You've done all adapting. right. Is that is it for you to say that? I think that's more for Maria Did and Faith okay? to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do okay? Yeah, do I do well? Maria says yes. I, I knew you would. I was just <laughs> <laughs> not making it any easier for you. You've done this before, like I say. Um, <laughs> Holly, for, explain to everybody your name and your journey to get here as well, because we missed that out at the beginning. So I'm keen to get everybody's name over a couple of times so it drums home to our listeners and to, and to our, our viewers just who you are, all of you. Uh, I'm Holly. I've, was, I've been riding. I've had bikes in my life, like since I was born. Most of the riders and super bikes now I've known since I was a baby. They've known me like as long as I've known my parents. So a lot it's a very big family i've grown up with a lot of good people on my side um i started actually probably riding at six because fraser my brother pushed and pushed for it and <laughs> so i was always like i don't want to ride i don't want to ride i don't want to ride and then one day i was like i really want to ride <laughs> so i did and i went quite well for my first time at six and went to race at fab racing uh, I did a lot of years there just with some of the top riders. A lot of them who run in British Tank Cup now have gone to Junior Worlds and places. Scott Ogden, who's now in Grand Prix. Josh Watley is in Grand Prix, who I was friends with when I was in Fab. So growing in a good paddock really from a young age, I did all the classes and flew the mini motors to metric uh, I did 50s. So my first year of 50s, I ran, I ran quite well. Uh, usually often in top six, very close to a few podiums, but these riders were very fast. And then I got a, I think I got a phone call. can't remember. It was a phone call or an email, but someone offered me a wild card to go and do Spanish championship in the Hawkers Talent Cup. Um, and I went and did that on 85s and they gave me a full year out there, which was a good step. So I was really happy I did that because that helped me when I moved into the paddock. And then I moved into doing British Tank Cups, similar sort of bikes. And then I've done two years in that. And now I've moved on to Junior Super Sport for a bit of a change. What's been the biggest change between doing BTC and Junior Super Sport? 
Uh, junior super sport bikes are obviously a lot bigger and a lot heavier. So it's quite physical. The BTC bikes were faster. And sometimes I think the junior super sport bikes have seemed to be a bit more forgiving towards me than the uh, the British Tank Cup bike was and the Moto3, which I like because it's just given me that change to sort of settle. And I also don't think I'm getting as stressed before my races now. Because British Tank Cup, it was... It was scary before you go out and race with these really fast, like these seriously fast, seriously talented. And I think now I'm so relaxed because it's something just new. Because they're not fast and talented? No. That's what you said. I've not gotten to that part. (laughs) No, they're real. Everyone's very fast and talented, but like it's new. So I've gone into a new field of people where I've not feel like I'm pushed back again. Like I've started fresh with more fast and talented kids, but just ones I've not ridden with. So the recovery. It's a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you made me sound so bad. <laughs> no, but it's just yeah, it's a new field of people, so I don't feel nervous anymore to feel like oh I'm going to come last because I don't know. No. So it's just completely fresh, which is just really nice to have. First time out on track today. Yeah. On the junior. Well, seat. no, yesterday I did. Oh the no, test. you did the test yesterday. Yeah, didn't you? first time more in anger today. Yeah, I got a wet session in yesterday, so my first time in the wet, and I absolutely loved it. That in the wet, I did really, I I was really happy with how I did in the wet yesterday. Where did I come? I think I was 15th yesterday in the wet. See somebody, I I don't even know who it was, (laughs) I didn't look. (laughs) Kev. (laughs) What a surprise, sorry, do carry on. Um, Yeah, I was really happy with the wet, I felt strong in the wet, and then into the dry again, I was happy, felt strong. I know I've got a lot more to come, but it's, it's a good start. How much, again, as I'll ask you the same question, how much of a positive influence have Maria and Faye had on your it's career? Just, it's been good to be able to come in and know that people are on my side. Like, again, how Maria said, like, being accepted for so long, is, it's been really difficult. And I think with Faye being someone who's owning a team, has sort of sat people up and it's been a lot different. And people have now gained so much respect just through the fact that Faye's done so much and Maria's there to just help us. Even when we're not happy with how we've done, we've got someone there like explaining how things can do better and the respect for us has increased. And I think it's helping more female riders in the sport to feel just more comfortable where they are. What's the biggest piece of advice you've been given so far? Um, I think just to relax. <laughs> I used to get so tense and like nervous because again, like I was the only girl last year in my class as well. And I think I just, there's a lot of pressure. Whereas now I just have a lot, there's a lot more girls around me and it's now just become normal. So it's almost like it's getting to the point where it's equaling up and it's every year there's more and more girls. So it just makes me feel a bit more comfortable being here now. Thank you. No problem. (laughs) <laughs> how deep that breath was before she starts <laughs> she's looking at oh god it's my turn introduce yourself Scarlett uh, I'm Scarlett and I don't know what else to say <laughs> uh, Racing Junior Super Sport um, it's my third year I think or like second and a half um, in the class um, I started racing motocross I started quite late I've always like grown up in the paddock because my dad sponsored quite a lot of riders he sponsored um, and this podcast he sponsors this podcast yes <laughs> um, he sponsored Christian Eden Joe Sheldon Shaw um, the girls he's given some money to um, tell us I his company name listen. give him a proper shout oh, out the fireplace new mills get you wood burning stoves <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I've always like <laughs> big up Kev. <laughs> yeah, I've grown up around bikes, but like I started quite late because obviously when I was in the paddock, like I would always see like the motor star class and stuff. Um, but we didn't really know like that I could get into it. Like obviously I had a massive interest in it um, and I've always loved it watching it and stuff, but I never really knew I could get into it. Um, but Christian Eden said, um, get her a motocross bike. So we got a 65 when I was like 12 or 13. Um, and I basically just started doing that for fun on practice tracks and stuff around Fat Cats. Um, and then we moved up to an 85. Um, and then like, obviously people in the paddocks, we were still in uh, BSB at this point, like coming to every round and people basically just said, oh, why don't you like put her on tarmac so we went and did supermoto in the british supermoto championship and um, i was in the academy class and my first year racing there i got fifth so we we're like oh like i could probably do quite well at this so we stuck at it um 
Christian said, get her a big bike and send her to BSB. And we were like, whoa, like <laughs> probably a step too far. So we went to Dali Moor instead where <laughs> Jamie and Katie Hand were racing. Um, and in 2019, it was, I think it was the first time in history that there was a female one, two, three in the championship. Um, it, I think at the time it was more like the championship, um, the win was changing between me and Katie. Um, nice. so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't don't go <laughs> we'll get to you in a second don't go that was when Jamie wasn't faster than me <laughs> bring back those days <laughs> but um yeah and then I, I missed around um obviously no not saying the credit to Katie um she won fair and square but um then we did a wild card at BSB at Knock Hill before I was ready. Um, didn't qualify, but it was a good learning curve. And then from then we've sort of just like, we stuck at club racing, like got better and better. And then um, halfway through maybe 2020, I think we did a wild card at SNET, met Faye and everything. Um, and then um, we sort of joined the team when Charlotte was in it. Um, and from then we've just stuck at this championship and I've got better and better. What's been your biggest achievement so far? Um, <laughs> it's not difficult. You can relax, you know. I'm not going to ask you I don't really have questions. any achievements. But no, 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 <laughs> I I think that, no, I disagree. I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree. Improving lap times, improving well, riding time, riding not style. Not being last is a great achievement. You've got a lot of people behind wow. you this round. That's Probably, good no, start. I would say my biggest achievement is joining the team with Faye because, like, I feel like it's given me that confidence because I've always put so much pressure on myself and my confidence has always been quite low. And I think joining the team with Faye it just gave me that boost. I was like, right, okay, like I've got people behind me, like I can do it, and yeah, that's probably so you it. Have made it. <laughs> Doesn't make, it's not achievements aren't always the finishing best, the top step I was or the, on the podium. That's my biggest achievement <laughs> was being Thanks, Holly. Holly in practice. Being, being a boy in practice. No, being Holly in practice. Being Holly. Yeah. I felt well done for reminding her that. <laughs> you were seriously fast this morning. I was good this morning and then I... No, was that were, just this morning? Yeah. Effed it up in qualifying. <laughs> you so sorry? I'm not allowed to swear. Yes. I am. I, I don't think Maria would be particularly impressed, but qualifying, like, <laughs> proper, like messed it up. Really badly, like proper, mm -hmm. proper big. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> but it's okay. what did you do? Basically, like I don't want to like slag other riders off because that's not fair. But like, however, a, there's a couple out there that wind me right up. <laughs> basically, here we go. This is the podcast. <laughs> I went out yeah, and know. I was behind a saw rider, and I thought, right. I'm a bit of a puff and I don't pass people very quickly. So I thought, right, I'll do a ride for, you know, clear my head. Don't stress out. I went back out. This rider had run on at the hairpin and pulled on back in front of me. I was like, you've got to be winding me right up. <laughs> I was stuck behind him again, right? I come back round and there's only three minutes left. I was like, seriously, right? So I passed him and I was like, well, now there's only two minutes left. And then I just didn't get to put a good lap time in. I was... Fuming. <laughs> Done it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm second to last on the grid, Dave. <laughs> Do you know what? You can have some fun tomorrow, then, aren't you? Yeah. That's the way. <laughs> but the fact again yeah, that I saw earlier on you were you were quite upset about it and I thought, oh for God's sake, I've got to do a podcast. Like, what am I gonna say now? But you've actually done that quite well. You've covered yeah, that quite well. You've really good story time Scarlett. <laughs> you are, yeah, because you start already. off a bit shaky and then you, you did this last time. You start off all like hee, and then all of a sudden you just go, boom, I'm like, he's having it, he's having it, I'm having some of that. And you just relax into it really nice and easy, don't you? Yeah. Yep. We're not going to name any names, though. I'm not naming no. names. No, we don't, we don't do that. That's not The thing fair. is, they're so nice. But, like, you know when you hate people on track? Like, you hate everyone on track. I'm not going to say you could hit them because... Yeah, please you don't. Know. Yeah, no. <laughs> We've been, <laughs> We've been <laughs> down that round. <laughs> but, like, I get, like, really angry. Like, no. and it winds me up, right? 
Really? So like, I don't want to name names. It's because yeah. like in the paddock, I'll go up and hug them and be like, "Hey, babes, love you." <laughs> Why I'm going to rip your head off if you cut me off on that last corner again? <laughs> Grind <in> my gears. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the biggest? We'll move on from that. What's been the the, the biggest um, positive that Maria's brought to the team along with Faye for you? I think <laughs> bringing Jamie on the team. No, I think um, trying to calm me down. Bringing Jamie on, bringing faster riders. <laughs> no, I think it's been good to have like someone to lean on because I do put a lot of pressure on myself and I get upset quite easily and I like I want to impress everyone around me more like than myself and I worry about that a lot so like I know that I can go to Maria and just talk to her about it and she'll be like just calm down like chill out like everything's going fine and same with Faye um I think as well it's given us like a platform so like Obviously, like we've got some like amazing opportunities from it. Like we've got like incredible helmet deals, leather deals, um, which has obviously come from being in the team and the platform we've got, um, which I think is really good. And it does give you that confidence to think like, right, I've got the good support behind me. Like I can do it sort of things. Yeah. I think I'm, what I'm going to do at the minute, I'm just going to bring Maria back in on this one. Just pass that across. Thank you. Maria, how do you approach situations like that? Because there's there's always a reason things happen. Yes, and usually. And everybody's different. All the girls have different characters. All riders have different characters. How did you approach that this afternoon? So, see, it's fairly recent and it's this weekend. It's the first weekend and you're fully ensconced in the team now. So how was... That's that's the big thing is learning all these different characters and what does work for each of them what is going to be best and how to get the best out of them, how the best to, it is to support them. And so a lot of it is I'm just trying to say, hey, look, I'm here for you and we'll try and work it out as we go along. And, you know, maybe I've been in that scenario myself before and I understand and, um, you know, a lot of it's just an opportunity to talk about it, discuss it, Rather than it drive you nuts inside and having to deal with it on your own, you're not on your own in this team. And um, yeah, look, we're still working it all out, really. Is one but, of the one of the biggest. Uh, I don't know how from your your management and from your um, guidance for the riders, but is one of the bigger things I assume knowing when to put an arm around and when to kick yeah. and knowing who responds best to what, to, what, to which to which yes it's it's learning that and um I th i'm still learning a bit with them it's still early days isn't it that's the thing do you know that and last year went so quick <laughs> with them and you know you you're spending four days with them of a weekend but that goes so quickly too especially um, when they all need attention in different right, classes as well, right now, well. <laughs> they do keep me busy do you feel like you've adopted five children I know <laughs> I never wanted I do kids. sat here <laughs> <laughs> sorry we love thank you, you Marie we do. Oh, thank you. it's just a question I thought about well because they are all different I mean listen to them <laughs> <laughs> they are all very different they are all very different so many ways <laughs> and um <laughs> Just, just learning how to connect with them best, and and it's then quite it a is a big undertaking, though, isn't oh, it? It's, it's massive. It's massive. <laughs> Trying to play it down a little bit for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's massive as in volume. Yeah. You've got five girls here, and um, it's maybe I can't do everything I want to do for all of them at the moment, but um, but I do need them to come halfway to me as well because that's gonna really massively speed everything up um regards getting to help them yeah i think it's an interesting thought thank you marie you're welcome hello <laughs> you don't <laughs> look at me now as if to say what's he gonna say now <laughs> what are you looking forward to seeing most about this season and what are your targets for the year this year, Apart from other riders. This year, I want to score the right kind of points. Like, <laughs> I want to get in the top 15. Um, not the licence points. Not, yeah, not the penalty <laughs> points. So, yeah, I want to get points. Last year, that was my goal, and I had a really difficult season last year, so I just want to build on that, get the right relationship within my own little team I've got around me so I can just go out every race, feel positive, like not beat myself up and just improve on last year. And yeah, I'm looking forward to just 
spending the year with my babes in my class. <laughs> Can't wait. But yeah, that's fine. Until I keep beating you. <laughs> then I'll probably knock her out. <laughs> 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 that's what you were actually so supportive. I tried sabotaging your hand once by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked your hand and you were like, ow. <laughs> So I actually know what she's on about. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I dropped it on you. Yeah, she's tried to kill me before the session. Have yes. no. you finished? I want to go home. Oh, right, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scarlett. That's right. You sit there and shut up. Just yeah, shut stop your, putting shut in. Shut your trap. Stop putting in. <laughs> Let's move to the end. Good evening. Sorry, you sat there so <laughs> sat there so patiently waiting for everyone else to come round. Do that introduction again for me. Uh, I'm Jeremy Hanks Elliot. Um, I'm also racing in junior super sport this year. It's my second year at BSB and second year with Faye. Faye picked me up. It's actually a year ago this year. Well, this round. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what was your journey to get here? And um, don't say M6, M1. That's, <laughs> well, you're sporting, everyone has probably heard this. Your sporting journey to get here. Um, so it's kind of difficult to say when I started racing. Because my mum used to race. I'm pretty sure she raced when she was pregnant with me and my sister. So if that counts, then I've been racing since I was unborn. <laughs> but um, pretty much it, I've basically got forced into racing. <laughs> because all my family have raced. Like, um, So it pretty much started with my great granddad, uh, Fred. And it, he rode sidecars um, at the TT and then... My granddad did it, Roy Hanks, and then he's done the TT for 50 years as well. And my nan, that's where he met my nan. Bring that microphone around a bit for that, that's it. That's, uh, that's where he met my nan at the TT. Um, and then they both raced together. Uh, and then my granddad won it, not with my nan though. And then my nan was the first woman on the podium at the TT as well. Um, and then my mom did it. My mom's over there. Uh, she did it with my dad. And... Uh, She's done it with a few other people um, as a passenger because everyone's uh, from a sidecar background. And then I didn't start till I was about 14 because my granddad retired in 2016 and obviously couldn't really focus on me at that point. And I didn't know I wanted to do it. I, I loved racing. I loved being in the paddock, but I didn't know I wanted to ride. Well, I knew I wanted to. I just didn't know when to start and I always thought it was a bit scary. So I didn't start till I was about 14. Um, but I went straight onto a 125. I'd never learned, I'd never even sat on a, well, I'd sat on a bike, but I'd never learned how to change gear. So I had to learn on a Prillia 125 two stroke. It was, I hated it. It's an, I hate two strokes. So I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know everyone's going to hate me for that. But I'd. Purebred two strokes. That's, that's they're all right. But do you know what to learn on compared to a four stroke? I just, it, it just seized all the time. And then <laughs> it spat me off. And then I lit, I've literally had my worst crash going like 20 mile an hour and it seized up I don't even remember it I had a concussion and everything the slower uh, ones that hurt more apparently yeah mm -hmm. definitely uh, yeah so I did uh, darling more for a bit with Scarlett um, but to be fair when I started I didn't know any girls that raced I think there was only a couple that even then and that weren't even that long ago uh, and then I went on to I had a 300 Kawasaki 300 um, did a couple like Mallory Darley and then got a 400 and did uh, Fund Sport and then, um, and then I'm here. <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, you've got to ask the question. Why didn't she go cycle? Oh, I know. Who's that. doing this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria. I will. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Why didn't you go cycle racing? <laughs> wow. It's teamwork, that, that. That actually was the plan. Um, that is what I was getting forced into. <laughs> I like this force thing. You're forced <laughs> for, to do something really cool. Twice no. you've said it. Yeah, you can't I know, say not forced. I don't mean like forced. I mean like <laughs> persuaded. Strongly encouraged. But I did really want to. I did really Strongly want to encouraged. Do it. I like that. You should do it. But FHO girls one. That would be so fun. What? That would be dangerous. What, side car? Side, yeah. yeah. FHO oh, girls I'm not side car. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. On a mini bike one. Oh, uh, okay. We need to get you on a proper one. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to do it. I've wanted to do it for so long. It's it's harder oh. than it looks because 
I've been on I've been on as a passenger I've never I've never drove a sidecar but I've been on as passengers what, what my mum did I have no idea how she, I'm stronger than my mum like sorry but I am <laughs> <laughs> like and I could not I, I went on like a taxi ride they do like taxi rides yeah. where you can just I was like oh, I'm gonna like get over the side and everything I sat there and I was like just holding on I had arm pump and everything I was like I wasn't even doing anything I was just sat there and I was like I got off I was like I'm never doing that but, yeah. but um, yeah so I was meant to go sidecar racing but once I started on uh, two wheels. Oh, okay. sorry. No, I'm okay. <laughs> You're doing the question. I'm kidding. <laughs> sorry, do carry on. Uh, once I got on two wheels, and then once I seen that, I was like started improving. I kind of didn't want to like move on, and I enjoyed it so much that I didn't want to. I'll try. I'll, I'll try it. I'd love to try cycle racing because that's all my family have done it. But on the roads or just on the short circuit? Oh, short circuit. I'd never go on the road. See your eyes light up. They're oh, not the roads. So <laughs> just from hearing like. Like my granddad's like crashed off the mountain at TT. I'm like, how do you even get back on after that? Like, that's not for me. I I make a lot of mistakes, and I know on roads you cannot make mistakes. So that I'd I'd stick to that's that's just my preference. But I couldn't, and my mum wouldn't let me. That's There's no way enough. my mum would let me on the road. On stick to the two wheels. Yeah. So maybe we can make a, a sidecar outfit out of. The other four. <laughs> yeah. I'm back here with my driver. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay, so we're down to three. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cool. Maybe Maria can drive and we both passenger. You, you, you right to the left. Good yeah, but it's a whole new sport. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you need trust to the people. Yeah, 100%. Oh, so yeah. yeah, imagine like you're hanging on the back and you've got, well, you've got control, obviously, but it's like, it, it's 50-50, but if that... What like driver does something wrong? You can't do anything. You know, that's if, it. That's if the passenger falls off, does the driver know? Sometimes they don't. But once you go around the corner and the sidecar <laughs> comes up like that, they're like, oh. It's a really good question to be fair. They flip because so, like I reckon I would let like, go. My passenger's not there, and <laughs> yeah. so so the sidecar just, just well the corners for sure, but it will speed up as well because oh. oh, yeah. the whole person on the yeah. side. But it's, it's a real thing. <laughs> it's that's a, what it's you do see them you turn around. You just like imagine your fingers were. Slipping and you let go and then she's <laughs> going to that. This is going into whole new realms, isn't it? This? See you in the bad yeah. <laughs> What's been your biggest achievement so far? Oh, uh, my scholar like really, I don't know. <laughs> um, to be fair, it's not, I've had like, I've won a race like at Thunder Sport and stuff, but I wouldn't even say that's my biggest achievement. Like this time last year, it was my first BSB here and I didn't like, I never expected I literally was like I'm not even going to get in top 20 but I scored like a point and it's only a point but I was like I was, like, I was so shocked at myself I was like, I'm going to win yeah. <laughs> I was like I thought I was on stuff but to be fair I kind of needed that for the rest of the season because then I was scoring points every round and I really did not expect myself to be scoring points in my first season but the only point, trouble with that now is now I feel like I need to win like, I need to be like at least like top at least top 10 uh, and that's my problem because I'm, I'm also very hard on myself as well. But that's, that's small steps and achievable goals though, isn't it? Yeah. That's the thing. You're not going from one point to going, right, now I'm going to build a podium next. Yeah, yeah. Because that is unlikely. No, yeah. In like, the class I, that I you're in. Win. Like, and, yeah, that's not in question. Yeah. But how it takes being you to realistic. get there, being yeah. realistic, yeah. realistic goals and achievements. Yeah. I think that's a great achievement to go through. Yeah. How has... Um, working with Maria and working with Faye had a, a positive effect on your career? I think uh, for Maria, it definitely helped me like, emo my emotional side because I'm so... Like, I feel like me and racing, it's like being in a relationship. It's I'm so like emotionally involved. Like If I do, if I had a, have a bad qualifying or a bad race, I'd, I just want to I just want to get off the bike, throw my gloves and I'm just so like hard on myself and Maria comes up and she helps me like... It means so much to you. Pick that up for me. Yeah. It means so much to her. She wants it. They all want it. They all, and it's. Um, but I also want them to enjoy it. They've got to enjoy it. And sometimes it's hard to see that with Jamie. Yeah, because she's so hard on herself. I know it's because she really wants it bad. And um, I know you're enjoying it as well. Yeah, I also enjoy when it. you when you do well. <laughs> yeah, you are, and you know the improvements are fantastic. So. Yeah. You. Who's your favourite? I don't I'm have no, favourites. It's not me, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'll and tell you later, Dave. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, Maria. <laughs> and then I'll tell you a lot. <laughs> um, what are you looking forward to most about this season? Uh, I think just 
pretty much just improving. Like, I know towards the end of last season that I was capable of top 10s, but because it, obviously, like, the season ends so quick and I, I can't, I'm good because I'm like, oh, I've just like, just got to go in. And, and then I think, yeah, I definitely think I've gained a lot of confidence from last year and I think it's helped me this year to hopefully be top 10s and because I know I can and I know because I always come in from a practice session or a qualifying thinking like I know what I want to do before I go out and I go out and sometimes it just goes everything just goes oh I need to go fast I need to go fast but my problem is I'm trying I end up trying too hard so like when I go on track days and stuff so like my boyfriend also races he's in stock six so I go on track days with him and he helps me like because he used to race 400s as well yeah and he's just taught me how to take a step back to go forward and actually like I'm not giving away my secrets or anything but, uh, <laughs> just yeah we've just going slower to go faster and that's definitely helped me a lot and I think that's that's what I'm aiming to use this year to to be at the front hopefully fabulous do you know what I thoroughly enjoyed that so, it's taking it's an hour wow. already if you look at our thing look it's an hour and two minutes dinner, yeah. already <laughs> And all because like none of you are like over 16. It's past your bedtimes. <laughs> I am. Oh, I'm 19. 22. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Don't shout at me at once. But I you know what? I not go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, if if it's okay with Maria, then it's okay with you. Let's do this again in the yeah. summer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see where you are. See when yes. you... Your predictions and, yeah, and your it's, thoughts it's on uh, oh, yeah, it's less cold. <laughs> yes. um, but it probably won't. We're not doing it at Knock Hill. Yeah, maybe no, at Brands better. Hatch. It's, yeah. it's better in the, in the, the good weather at Brands yeah. Hatch, or maybe at Thruxton somewhere like that. Donington. Uh, uh, Donington. No, not so I'm not. Oh, am I working now? I don't know. To be honest, no, I don't want to do it. Happy sunshine oh. in Knock Hill. Yeah. It's oh, a beautiful part of the world. It's as long as the sun's shining. Glorious. Why? You've been learning new words, haven't you? Glorious. Astronomical. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a word off. Brilliant. Can we actually? If you want. <laughs> it won't be good. Super colour fragile. I was going to use that one. That one's so one. boring. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> non binary. <laughs> That's two words. Trigonometry. <laughs> Anti disestablishmentarianism. I. That's Depression. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, all of you. That's like thoroughly. <laughs> oh, Way to end that. <laughs> thank you so much, thank Maria. You. Thank you, and thank it's you to Faye as well. <laughs> it's been absolutely fantastic. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you have as well. It's easy once you relax. It's not difficult. It's just questions and answers, yeah. and it, it's all about you. So. I've actually learned loads about them without Just, them realising. I wasn't going to tell Just them that. <laughs> the BMW people were saying in, while we were in Spain, <clears throat> they were um, commenting on YouTubers not having real jobs. Is this what pop, being a podcast presenter is like, being a YouTuber? Kind of. <laughs> that wasn't meant to. It's sorry, that came out of it. Oh, <laughs> like, What's her name again? Kate. I'm just kidding. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> they, were, they were all joking. Yeah, they were like, oh, <laughs> the, the, the people without jobs have shown up. Can but, I? Yeah, well, like, we just like the social media lot. Well, I don't know. I just wonder how much. When, how much I earn? I know how much like, the, <laughs> there is behind the scenes. An awful lot. A lot going on, but I've got to edit all this. Oh. When I come back from holiday. All of us. So say I went yeah. down, down. <laughs> would, Could you edit that out? What, the swearing? No, like, if I went... <laughs> I could, but I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is I have the choice to what I edit out and what I don't. In front of the camera. So it's, it's the stop it. We should do an animal noise competition. Well, we'll do that in the summer. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. You can make as many noises as you like in the summer. I'm so good. You know, on holiday, I won a prize because I had the best animal noise. <laughs> what animals? It yeah, was an eagle, it. but I'll do just it. save that. For no, please go on. Do it, do it. It's I'm, having really good. I'm having some of that. I'm having some of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased we didn't say this till the summer. This is brilliant. <laughs> the monkey or the chicken, please. Which one do you want? Both. Both. Both? Okay. Yeah. At the same time. No. <laughs> I need a chicken first. Game. Do this. Buck, buck, buck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to make ringtones out of these. You know? <laughs> the, monkey. the monkey's quite loud. So. <laughs> Our mother. Prepare. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
you see how much you're learning on this. I I didn't even like that. I think on that note... Please edit all that out. I can't believe I've done that. Do you know what? You did this last time. You started off so quietly going, I don't, yes, I don't want to say this. And all of a sudden you're doing monkey noises and chicken noises and stuff like that. Uh, if that so, gets me good sponsors, then... It's, well, it's whatever it takes, out. it's fine. Just to zoom. <laughs> so also now, Give me money. for when we do this again in the summer, you all need to learn animal noises, and you. The offer's there, Maria, that's fine. We can, we can do that. But um, this will go out just before Alton Park so a couple of weeks because I'm going on holiday wow. and after oh, chatting to you lot I need it <laughs> where am I going? <laughs> I'm going to Texas are you going to do the tornado camp? no I'm going to Kota for MotoGP oh. say you're going to MotoGP. so that's that's the beauty of turning 50 and having a generous girlfriend who's taking oh, me to Texas day. she's ace I do love her a lot she, yeah, she, she comments is. on my Facebook post I love it she'll I be just, here on I think she's she brilliant hang on a minute I love this happens does she not comment on your Facebook post <laughs> yeah no I don't know <laughs> what happens is he, is I go it. through the pad and go, everybody goes hi Dave where's Jen <laughs> really I'm fine thanks <laughs> brilliant thank you lot start as well <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm finishing it now. I'm off, I'm off to Texas. Ladies, thank you so thank much. You. We'll see you in the thank summer. Have a great weekend. Me too.